we will now consider an example with multiple sources switching at different times fundamentally no different from any case uh, we have discussed before but just a little more bookkeeping involved okay as always a circuit with a single capacitor and let us say this is 1 nanofarad and these resistors are 2 kilo ohms, 2 kilo ohms and 1 kilo ohm and I also have a current source. Let us say it is given that V s switches from 0 to 10 volts at t equals 0 and I s switches from 0 to 10 milliamps at t equals to microseconds. Okay. So, if I had to sketch these, this would be V s, the x axis is of course, time and the y axis is either voltage or current and I s would go from 0 to 10 milliamp at t equals to microseconds. Okay. So, it looks slightly more complicated, but essentially between the terminals of the capacitor 1 1 prime, we can still represent the whole thing with a single source in series with a single resistor or a single current source in parallel with a single resistor. Okay. So, either can be used, I will use the Thevenin equivalent here, but you can use the Norton equivalent and verify that the answers are exactly the same. Okay. So, let me call these V s and I s, let me keep them as variables for now and 1 1 prime, then this is what I have. Okay. So, now again I will not uh, show the details of calculating the Thevenin equivalent voltage right? that you can do quite easily and you will see that the voltage between 1 1 prime when it is open circuited. In other words, the Thevenin voltage will come out to be V s divided by 2 minus I s times 1 kilo ohm. Okay. So, that is what it is going to be. So, now if you evaluate this V s is changing at some time, I s is changing at some other time. Okay. I s is like that. So, if you sketch this entire input to the circuit, right? so if I calculate V t h in series with R t h and I have my capacitor there which is 1 nanofarad and if I sketch this V t h it will look like that. So, this is really all I need to do. Okay. So, V t h will be 0 before t equal to 0, because both V s and I s are 0. All you have to do is to substitute these values into that expression and between t equals 0 and t equals 2 microseconds, the output will step up to 5 volts which is V s by 2 and I s is still 0. Okay. And after t equals 2 microseconds, the contribution of V s will be 5 volts, it is V s by 2 and contribution of I s will be minus 10 volts. Okay. So, what happens is this will switch down and stay at minus 5 volts forever, Okay, because we have no other changes that are specified. So, all we have to do is still solve the same circuit. By the way, the value of R t h between these two terminals, again calculate it for yourselves and see that it comes out to be 2 kilo ohms. So, all we have to do is still solve the same kind of circuit as before, but with a slightly more exotic input. Okay. As long as the inputs are piecewise constant, this is quite easy. You treat each piece separately as a separate step input with its own initial condition. Okay. 
So, first we have this step the input steps from 0 to 5 volts okay. and let me say that the initial condition just before the first step is applied at 0 minus is 0. It can be anything, but let me assume that it is 0. So, then for this part of the curve from t equals 0 to t equals 2 microsecond essentially I have only a single step input which goes from 0 to 5 volts okay. that is I will be solving the circuit for an input like this. After this it will change, but it does not matter its effect will only come later this is 0 volts that is 5 volts that is 2 microseconds and we know how to do this we have done this already. So, the solution from t of 0 to 2 microseconds will be we can still use the general form which is V c of infinity plus V c of 0 minus V c of infinity the whole thing times exponential minus t by R c and R c here you can see is 2 microseconds. Okay. So, what the output will do is this V c of infinity is 5 volts as far as this step is concerned. Okay, We are only solving with this step input that is the one thing you should not get confused about. It is not that V c of infinity will actually reach 5 volts because the input is being changed again, Okay, but if this were the step if this 5 volt step were persistent till t equals infinity it would go to 5 volts. Okay. So, it is the final condition assuming only this step is applied that is an important thing to understand. So, V c of infinity here is 5 volts okay, plus V c of 0 is 0 and we have minus 5. So, essentially I have 5 volts minus 5 volts exponential minus t by 2 microseconds and if I sketch that part it will do something like that and it would eventually have reached 5 volts. Okay. But, at t equals 2 microsecond we have the other step. Okay. So, we can treat that as a separate step and that step is going towards minus 5 volt. Okay. So, for uh, the following time period 2 microsecond to infinity because we have no other changes till infinity. So, this will be uh, valid and this is a different step response and as far as this step is concerned see the input is going to minus 5 volts and at t equals infinity the capacitor will be an open. So, whatever V t h is that will be the value of V c. So, as far as the second step is concerned V c of infinity is minus 5 volts okay. plus V c of 0 for this is the initial condition initial condition is just before the step. Okay. I do not want to make the arguments too complicated by writing 2 microseconds and all of those things. I am showing this with a combination of sketches and pointing out what happens where. So, this V c of 0 do not assume it is t equals 0 here it is the initial condition for whatever step is being applied. So, it is a 2 microsecond. So, if you calculate it the first step the 0 to 5 volt step will cause a change like this and it turns out that this again you calculate for yourself this is done by substituting t equals 2 microseconds in this equation and it turns out to be 3.16 volts. Okay. So, V c of 0 for the second part of the response is 3.16 volts minus V c of uh, infinity okay. and that V c of infinity is nothing but minus 5 volts okay, because that is where it is eventually going to reach and the exponential is exactly the same because the circuit is the same and the time constant is the same. Okay. So, essentially each time the change happens you treat that as a new step the initialization of a new step and solve for it. So, for this part the solution is minus 5 volts plus 8.16 volts exponential minus t by 2 microseconds. So, what it will do is the following. So, it will eventually reach minus 5 volts it is supposed to reach that the way it will do it is 
like that. Okay. So, the first step will take it to some positive value, it does not reach all the way to 5 volts, because we have only given 2 microseconds for it and 2 microseconds is the time constant of the circuit. It takes many, many time constants for it to reach very close to 5 volts. So, now uh, it reaches uh, this voltage and then from there it falls back to minus 5 volts, because of the application of the second step. Now, one thing I have to be careful about here is this T should be really T minus 2 microsecond. I have not been very strict with notation here. This T does not refer to the time axis T here, but it is the time elapsed after the second step is applied. Okay. So, maybe I should have written T minus 2 microsecond over there, Okay, because this applies only to T more than 2 microseconds. So, this is the second part and this is the first part. Okay. So, in a similar way, you could have a network with uh, many resistors, many independent sources whose values are stepping from one constant to another or you could have fixed voltages and currents with some switches being operated. When you change the states of switches, what can happen is that it can effectively look like a step input and sometimes when you change the states of switches, even the time constants can change. Okay. So, you have to be aware of all of these things, but uh, after each step is applied, you treat it as a constant input circuit with certain initial condition and then work out the result. Now, at the time of the next step is applied, you calculate the initial condition from the previous solution and proceed. Okay. So, even if you have a very large number of steps, you can do it systematically. You can solve for the voltages or currents in the circuit systematically like this. Okay. 